It's an icon, no question about it. It's one of those things that everybody wants to see when they come to town. I'm Pete Gershon, and I'm the curator of programs at the Orange Show Center for Visionary Art. The Beer Can House was included on a lot of the Orange Show's early eye-opener tours, which were bus tours taking people around to interesting sites in the city. We have a very anti-elite attitude towards art. We celebrate artists who may not come from an artistic background and work with whatever materials might be around. One of those artists, of course, was John Milkovich, who designed the Beer Can House. He was born in 1912 and grew up in this neighborhood. He moved into this house in 1942 and it was pretty much brand new. He and his wife Mary lived their whole lives in this house for most of the time. This was just a normal looking house. It was in 1968 that he began to transform it into something completely different. Put in a patio cover and of course he needed to have a floor underneath it so he put in some concrete pavers and pressed interesting looking rocks in his marble collection and other things that he found and he kind of went nuts with it. He covered the driveway and he covered the front yard. He told everybody it was because he didn't want to mow the lawn anymore. He began uh, the beer can art in the 1970s. John grew up during the Depression, and people from his generation really did not ever want to throw anything away. You see, he had saved up all his beer cans, flattened them into stacks, kept them in the attic, he cut off all the rims and linked them together to make these amazing streamers that, as you can hear, when they blow in the wind, they make an incredible sound. He told people that he didn't want to paint the house anymore. So between the can garlands and then these flattened panels of basically it's aluminum siding made out of beer cans, it actually lowered the family's electric bills. He told his wife Mary that he was just going to do a border on the bottom. And so while she would come home from her job at the cosmetics counter at Foley's every day, she would notice that this border had gotten a little bit thicker and a little bit thicker until the entire house was covered. I think she was skeptical at first, but she really caught the spirit. She designed a beautiful little lemon tree made out of those plastic lemons that you get lemon juice from in the store. She did have a rule though, nothing inside the house, only outside. On the inside, it's a time capsule. It's all the original colors, it's all the original appliances. Everything is intact and it really gives you a glimpse of what life was like in Houston in mid-century. Back in the day, John's neighbors were very supportive, I will say that. Some of them even helped him drink the beer. For me, it's very appealing to think about the fact that every one of these cans represents a unit in time that he spent with friends and family here at the house in his beloved yard. You see a great variety here. There's a lot of Texas brands. We've got some Billy beer. People used to ask John if he had a favorite and he said he bought whatever was on sale. The Guinness Book of World Records sent somebody one time to count, and I think they gave up at 50,000 cans. He's part of a group of artists that some would call outsider artists, self-trained artists. We call them visionary artists. People who are not creating a work of art to sell or, or to go to the museum or a gallery space, but to exist in a community and uh, really express an intensely felt personal vision. For him, this was kind of a goof. It was something to do in his spare time and have fun in the yard. When people would come around and try and convince him that it was art, he thought that was absolutely ridiculous. 